Gummy's workshop. See that Darth Vader knocking around? What's that about? <laughs> There's a German Darth Vader here as well. It's behave. Anyway, um, I've been out on the pumps. I have been uh, down with Phil at Smart Parts and he's been showing me some new products. Um, I've got my hands on a uh, prototype to near production enemy. Uh, E-N-M-E-Y. So not enemy, but enemy. Yeah, anyway, what's in the name? Um, I've got the little offender here, just to make sure it's degassed. I know there's no paint in it. Yeah, so there's batteries in the hopper as well. Now, um, I'm rather excited about this. Uh, this is um, their first uh, mechanical prototype. Uh, as you can see, it's quite tidy. I mean, there's, um, there's a few corners that have been cut to save cost, like... Um, the barrel is just a standard baggy barrel. But with some paint we've had over the last couple of years, uh, 10 balls stuck in your barrel, you know what I'm talking about, this is a positive advantage. But we all know the first thing you're going to do is go out, jump on eBay, and buy an aftermarket barrel anyway. Let's face it, we all do it, right? Uh, especially me. And, you know, if you want a custom barrel, come see. Um, it's also got a double tailed bolt, and, believe it or not, it's bolt out back. You're getting power out, you, you don't know. This is going to get better as it goes on, right? <laughs> By the end of this little film, you'll be going, no way. <laughs> anyway, look, bolt out back, unscrew that. Bolt drops out in your hands, you've seen my bolt out stuff. Right, slide the bolt out, take your flugy, it goes in here, comes out the front. How easy is that for clean? That means anybody can clean this, right? Even if you're scared to even pick up a tool, you can clean this. Because it's a no tool talk down. Um, no tall takedown, not no tall talk down. <laughs> Derp. <laughs> so Frankie at PC has got me good and proper. Anyway, look, um, it comes with a standard SP1 ASA and the old braided line. Um, first thing you want to do, get rid of all this. Fit it with a little on off. Um, add some macro line and you can move everything about. But let's go straight to the actual shooting. Um, so I'm just going to gas this up, pointing at my ball catcher. Um, now, something I haven't seen for a long time on a marker of this type is actually a safety switch. Um, last time I saw a safety switch on a, a marker that was this kind of setup was an auto mag. Um, I mean, obviously the cockers have them, but a cocker is a completely and utterly different system. But if you look at the standard ion, it didn't have a safety switch. Yes, you could switch the ball off, but if it was a cold day... Um, and the old plastic cover to the ball was a bit tough, you really had to push it, and half the time you didn't bother. So you'd walk in, you know, you'd turn your gas off, walk in, you'd still have enough charge in the gun to fire a single ball. Would it? Okay. Watch. Nothing. And I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, I've got some paint. Um, Remember the stuff that Slingers gave me way back when we were making the Baby Maker? Now remember that this sat in his, in his, in his, what am I? I'm turning Greek, you know? Uh, remember that this sat in his Land Rover, or as they call them, discos, I suppose for discovery. Yeah, alright, okay, I'll get that now. Yeah, I'll get it. Alright, fair enough. Yeah, you got me one. This sat in his Land Rover over the winter, in all the snow and all that old crap, this was sitting in the back of his Land Rover for a, a couple of weeks apparently, or a month or something, plus it's been sitting here at the workshop now for a month, or oh, actually two months now, so this is three months old, been sitting around in the cold, right, it's not good paint, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill the hopper up and uh, we're going to change the camera view and we're actually going to see how this shoots because I haven't shot it yet, I've put some air through it but I haven't actually put any paint through it yet because uh, today's the first time I've got the paint uh, we're going to check that out now <laughs> see what happens ok so we're back again I'm, I'm, suddenly, I'm kind of thinking, would it be better to be molested or molested? depends who's doing it I suppose anyway so, gun on, air on, no paint in yet let's switch my hopper on Right, hoppers on. I've dropped some paint on the floor and it's broken. So this is quite brutal stuff. Turn that one down. I don't know what's 
going to happen. That's a customer pumper price, it's about 90 quid, right? Uh, I'm sure I'm correct on that. I'm sure I was told the retail is 90 quid. It's 90 quid! 90 quid, dudes, yeah? <laughs> My mechanical kit's fitted to your marker about 120 quid. That's not the marker, that's just the mechanical kit. <laughs> 90 pound retail. Now, as soon as I thought that, I thought 90 pound retail, right? Bloody good price. All you've got to do now is buy yourself an SP1 body, swap the bodies over, because this is for all purpose inside a vibe, right? So you just buy your SP1 body, put your SP1 body on, you've got a mechanical SP1, right? Why bother? For £120 retail, that's £120 retail, you can have this... In SP1, guys, it's called the G1M. Now, unfortunately, um, we, we didn't, yeah, it's, it's a cocker system. You know what I'm saying, isn't it? <laughs> I would like to think that maybe the G was for Gommy, <laughs> but it's not. Okay, it's for Gog, obviously. But um, as far as I'm concerned, it's the Gommy one mech. <laughs> it's not, but it is now. You know what I'm saying? So... £120, an SP1 mechanical, 120 quid. That means you don't have to buy a second-hand SP1 for 50 quid to get hold of this body. Now, the reason I buy these bodies is normally, when I'm building my custom markers, I'll import the Deadly Wind aluminium bodies. You know those really nice um, aluminium ones they do? They're absolutely beautiful. But, by the time I've done shipping, even if I'm getting them at a discount, I don't get full trade from them, but even if I'm getting them at a discount, by the time they hit my door, they're 80 quid, and that's just a body. Now that's why I started buying the second-hand SP1s, so I, can have, so I can add the SP1 bodies to the ion or the Vibe internals and make my own max. It's not worth it now. Um, I can go with £120 in my pocket, retail and buy a brand new SP1 mechanical. And then, of course, because it is an SP1 still inside, you've still got the option to add an ion frame, and ion electronics, but you've still got it as a mechanical to fall back on, or play with it as a mechanical. It doesn't matter. You've seen how well it worked. Only thing I would like to see is um, some positive trigger stops. Um, in both directions, in both back and forwards, because people that are not used to Max, um, like when we go back to the Auto Mag days, this trigger can be a little bit fluffy. Uh, in the next film we're going to do, we're going to take this apart and look inside. You know what I'm like, don't I? Meccano child, I've got to take it apart, I've got to have a look inside. And um, I think I already know what's in there. I think they're using the standard solenoid board. Um, with a slightly modified solenoid and maybe the trigger's acting directly on it um, I don't know if there's going to be a pin in there like an auto mag system but uh, we'll find out in the next film Bye! and if you see that Darth Vader about give Luke a shout out here, I want him out of it you know what I mean? <laughs> Darth Vader, what are you lot like? I'll catch you later, ta -da. Bye!